Such an incredible thing to look at. It's just an incredible, colourful, crazy Portuguese sight. The most incredible sunset. This is the one. Nice. Hi everyone, it's John here for Tour Radar and it feels like an eternity since I've said that and released a vlog for you guys. What a wild ride the past year has been and I'm sure many people, including myself, can't wait to finally leave everything behind us and get back out there. So right now, I'm here to kickstart your wanderlust with a vlog I actually shot and edited last year. I capitalised on a tiny travel corridor opportunity that I had and with the help of our friends at Visit Portugal, my aim was to really explore the depth and variety of Portuguese tourism. After arriving into Lisbon, I immediately left the capital for Pena Palace. A romanticist castle built in the rather windy Central Mountains, completed in the late 19th century, it is a world UNESCO heritage site and it's easy to see why. I've just travelled straight from Lisbon, about half an hour outside uh, of Lisbon to the Central Mountains, heading towards the coast um, and you're yeah, stopping off at this insane place, as I said. It looks ridiculous, inside is even more ridiculous, even more grand. Um, what it's like to be a king, eh? Just living a life of luxury on top of an insane mountain. Pena Palace's grandeur continued on the inside and was far beyond anything I was imagining before I went in. Making my way toward the first overnight stop in Nazare, I had to check out the incredible Noah Surf Hostel along the way. Here, I met resident pro surfer Gui Fonseca. He then took me on a tour of the accommodation, which even included a skate park on the roof and an infinity pool, finishing up with some epic food from the resident chef. So, what a crazy first day I've had in Portugal so far. I starting off in Lisbon, then heading to the Sintra Mountains at Pena Palace, that ridiculously colourful architectural building, plonked right at the top of the mountain, absolutely incredible, and then having a little taste of the ocean uh, at Noah's Surf Hotel, and now I'm here in Obidos, really diving into the depths of Portuguese history. I think I'm going to say this so many times during this vlog, but the architecture here is amazing, and it's so different, and it's been touched by so many different periods of time because it's so old. Um, it's got like a little dash of everything in there um, and it just makes for just such an incredible thing to look at. Look at that. That is amazing. What we're still doing talking, have a look, one last look at this, boom, and then I'm going to show you down the streets. Let's go. Okay, so one thing you have to be very, very careful of is the edge because I'm not scared of heights, but that is a long way down. This ancient medieval city is, yep, you've guessed it, a world UNESCO heritage site and is considered one of the world's literature cities as many stores, churches and supermarkets are also bookstores. The beautiful cobbled streets are just amazing to walk through. So what an incredible end to my first day in Portugal. Look at this, this is Obidos at sunset. Can it get much better than this? Skies popping, the roofs are popping in colour as well. Uh, the trees are giving off this vibrant lime green and it is just a stunning way to finish off the first day. Doesn't look too bad for over 2,300 years old. Probably better than I would look if I was that age. Oh, you just go for it. Oh. <laughs> I also had the opportunity to try a local tradition, a cherry liqueur in a chocolate cup. I wish I had 10 more. 10 more. <laughs> <laughs> After reaching the seaside town of Nazaré that evening, I was excited to wake up the next day to soak up the beautiful Portuguese sun. I think I'm a little bit lost now, but this is fun. You know, what's exploring is not getting a little bit lost. I then ventured into the local fishing market and learned a lot about the origins of the fishing culture here and also saw how many of the traditions were still being kept alive today. We've got some, well you can make up your mind whether it looks appetising or not, but we have some fish here caught from about a day or so ago. Now it's been curing in the sun, uh, which is a traditional method. Uh, we've got some monkfish, we've got some sea bass and most commonly we get mackerel. I found my very first Portuguese car in Nazaré. So the traditional way is to add a bit of cinnamon. Mm. 
Mm. <laughs> the hype is real. Mm. Check that out. After soaking up the last of the views, I made the trek down to the iconic lighthouse. Here were a collection of surfboards and the like, which belonged to pro surfers all over the world that surfed the giant waves here on the North Beach. So right at the bottom there, that is a long way down, it's going to be at least 50 metres, is the sea at the bottom. But during the massive surf, the foam comes all the way up to the edge here. So you can really just tell just how big these waves are. I've surfed in six foot waves before, which is around two metres. Um, and the world record around here is just shy of 25 metres. So, yeah, six, six foot was enough for me. That evening epitomised Nazare's modern culture to me. Watching fishermen and local surfers do their thing on the North Beach as the sun set in the background behind the lighthouse. It was majestic and capped off my stay in Nazare perfectly. After again choosing to make the journey late at night to my next stop, I woke up in the morning in the vibrant town of Porto and damn was I stoked to explore here. I started the day off with an orientation walk, then swapped the walkways for waterways. So one of my favourite ways to explore a city is straight to the heart of it on a river. We're currently on the Douro River, which runs from somewhere just north of Madrid in Spain all the way to here, uh, the Auli in Porto. Look at those incredible colour buildings. Absolutely amazing. Hopping off the boat, I stuck to the river's edge, crossing over Gusta Weifel's Bridge to the other side, taking in the sights as I closed in on my evening tour. That's where we got the uh, river cruise from earlier and you can see the incredible view from both sides of the river. I'm not sure which one I like more actually. Sandiman Port is world famous and if you've never tried the Tawny Port before, you can find it almost everywhere. It's incredible. Founded in the late 1800s, the company offers tours around the cellars and the distilling rooms which is a must do and was certainly a highlight in Porto for me. The professional staff have a huge wealth of knowledge, they just love sharing and my awesome guide Mario poured me a fine selection to try. I then set out by the front of the river and took in the amazing evening sights. What I'm loving about Porto is that every single street you turn around, there's another amazing looking row of buildings, another amazing row of facades, just another burst of colour, another load of people creating a great energy and vibe throughout the whole city. It really, really is such an enjoyable place to be in, such an enjoyable place to explore and I cannot wait to get lost in all the windy, beautiful, colourful, vibrant streets later today. Every angle you look, it is just beautiful. The next day, I met up with a friend who showed me a handful of the must-see places in Porto. These included the Livraria Leo, the Porto Bookstore, which heavily influenced the Harry Potter author, J.K. Rowling, and you can definitely tell. The Porto train station, Sal Bento, with its huge tiled murals symbolizing pivotal battles and daily life during the Portuguese 14th century. And of course, the best pastel de nata shop, 
in town. Mm. So we've walked up Liberty Square, up the hill to here, this rather amazing and rather tall Baroque style building. Now this is the Clerigo Tower, uh, which joins onto the church. Now the church was built first and then the tower was an addition uh, later on. Started to be built in 1735 and it's around 76 meters tall, which is pretty high. Or if any of you are wondering about climbing it, if you're here, it's 200 steps. It's a very, very popular attraction um, here in the heart of Porto and it offers incredible views over the old town uh, and the Duero River. <laughs> Taking in the last sights in Porto, I only had one complaint, that I didn't spend enough time here. It was time to head back down south into Lisbon, but I was not done yet. My first stop of four along the way was in Braga. Braga is yet another gem in the Portuguese collection, which is becoming increasingly popular with locals as well as tourists. Oh, that's loud. The narrow street in Braga. Absolutely amazing, the attention to detail, including the scene in is absolutely ridiculous. I just don't know where to look. Everything is so busy, but like in such a beautiful way. I made a very quick pit stop at the mountain sanctuary of Bom de Jesus, just outside Braga, with its hard to miss staircase and breathtaking views. This is the original courtyard where this town began in the 10th century and it's probably one of the most beautiful places I've been. Not here in Gimmerich, but in Portugal altogether. I just cannot get over it. It's absolutely beautiful. With its impeccably preserved 10th century medieval castles and outrageously quaint streets, squares, shops and well, pretty much everything, Gimmerich was probably one of my favourite places in Portugal. I even tried the famous delicacy called the Francesina, also their own versions of Portuguese tart. So hello everybody, I have started my morning off in one of the original capitals of Portugal here in Coimbra. One of the previous capitals of Portugal, Coimbra, has its roots dating back to the Roman period. The university being one of the prominent features was established in 1290. The library is one of the most lavish rooms I have ever seen in my life. This 18th century edition is covered in detailed paintings and gold trim, highlighting the affluent period in Portuguese history in which it was built. Okay, so you all know what time it is. I'm outside Briossa with a whole bunch of Pastel de Nice right now. Now this place in Coimbra has won a ludicrous amount of awards right now. I think I'm ready. <laughs> mm. one shoes. Visiting the museum in Coimbra gave me an unbelievable insight into the Roman period. I could have easily spent a day there. But I had to move on to catch the last of the sun in Coimbra. And where better to do it than in one of the most beautiful botanical gardens in Europe? And what an epic sunset it was. Lisbon is such a well documented city that I thought I would just show you a couple of my personal bucket list parts of my visit. After intentionally uh, definitely intentionally getting lost in the streets of Lisbon, I found one of the most iconic parts of the city. So I have found the street that I was looking for. This is the Rua de Bica Le Duarte Bello. Now I'm absolutely butchering that pronunciation yet again, but you probably recognize this little tram if you've uh, Instagrammed Lisbon or Portugal at all. Um, and this takes tourists and locals to the bottom, from the bottom of this street all the way to the top. Um, and it's just a one way tram either way and they swap over in the middle um, about halfway down and see it crisscrosses over so very very cool what a beautiful place to spend my last evening here in Lisbon in Portugal <laughs> but sadly but 
I've got some good news. I have hopefully saved the best till last. Um, they're actually a uh, secret family recipe passed down from generations and there is very few people that know the recipe. But anyway, here we go, I'm ready. <laughs> I found it. This is the one. This is the one. Oh. Well, I hope I've recharged your wanderlust even just a little, and that you've enjoyed watching me stuff my face with pasta de natas while exploring one of the most diverse countries I have ever been to. You simply must visit for the culture, the people, the surfing, the food, the history, the views, the art. I could go on and on, and I feel I have only just scratched the surface and will definitely be heading back soon. I'll put my recommendation tour links for Portugal in the description below, so be sure to check them out. Make sure you all stay safe and happy future travelling.